Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another episode of the Bauer Spotlight series, where I shine a spotlight on a different game crafter game each month. We do an unboxing, a gameplay, a setup, and then we end with a review of that specific game. And this month, we're reviewing Iron Helm. This is for one player, ages 12 plus, taking about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And before we get into the review, I do want to mention that I get paid to do the Bauer Spotlight series. So this is, in fact, a paid review, even though I am going to be giving you my honest opinion, as I always do. So in Iron Helm, this is a solo game in which you are going to be diving into a dungeon. You're going to pick a character who will have their own unique statistics, and then you are going to get some starting items that will be unique to them. You're going to purchase potentially more items if you'd like to from the merchant, and then and you're going to dive into the dungeon and you're going to be fighting bad guys you're going to be meeting the merchant you're going to be rolling dice and trying to get to the boss at the end even though it is very difficult to do that sometimes you'll have a different boss depending on the different monsters that you fought in the cave and if you're able to defeat the boss then however much gold you have left over is going to equate to you being able to retire so Normally this would be where I would show you how the game is played and you see the, the top-down perspective, but since we've already done a whole gameplay of this and a setup of this, we're just going to get straight into my thoughts. So let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. The only two groups of people that this game is going to be for are solo gamers and also family gamers to a certain extent. And, and I'll talk more about that in the pros, but just earmark that think about that for a little bit later continuing on with the cons the rules could have been a bit better they're not bad rules but they just could have been a little bit more clean and i've got one crazy idea for them which is this is the iron helm appendix which is very very short and this is the player handbook aka the rule booklet and i really wish they just would have it just makes so much sense. I don't understand why there's two separate booklets because sometimes you will need to go to this booklet like, oh, uh, when I need to throw an axe, how does that work? And sometimes you'll need to go to this booklet. Oh, I don't remember. What are my choices when I defeat a level two monster? And you're never quite sure which booklet you should go to and I don't know why they just didn't consolidate them. Now, in a multiplayer game, I do like when people do something like this because then one person can be reading one and one person can be reading the other. But at the same time, I'm not a big fan of having any information that's essential not in the rules. So I just wasn't a big fan of the appendix, and I don't know why it's there. Continuing on with the cons, I wish there was just a little bit more content in the base box. There's only three bosses, which is a little bit underwhelming at face value, but getting to those bosses is incredibly difficult. So take that with a caveat. Uh, but I do wish that there were some more plot cards in particular, because I really do like the plot cards. They help the theme come across really well. I want more monsters. I want more trappings. I want more everything. But that's more of a pro, as I'm about to tell you, because I really, really, really stick it like this game. But I still wish there was a bit more in the base box. And once you put everything into the base box, you'll be like, man, there's a lot of room in this. I wish there was just a smidge bit more. Continuing on with the cons, uh, the player mat does not come with the game, so you are going to want to order the player mats, as I'll tell you in the pros, because they're awesome, but you are going to have to pay extra for said player mats. Any other cons that I have with the game? Not really. I'm, I'm honestly kind of grasping for straws with the cons on this game, because moving on to the pros, Iron Helm is one of the best solo games I have ever played. It is easily in my top three, and it might be my number two. I'd have to make a list to really think about it. But I, th I think it's firmly in my number two or number three spot as my favorite solo game of all time. But the thing that I really love about this game, and what I think a lot of solo games can do, if they're really, really solid solo games with great stories and great gameplay, is that you can also utilize it as a family game. I played this quite a few times in my classroom and with my son where I was kind of like the DM where I ran the game for the kids but they got to make all the decisions and by the end of the game they were doing most of like the the the, the work where it's like oh we're putting out the two cards and we're deciding which one we want to pick because it's you know it is repetitive which is another con that I have in this game it can get repetitive you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again and that's also another con that I want to have is there's a lot of luck with this game when you draw the ambush card is huge when you draw uh the the main and or the the mushrooms or something like that can be a big deal and that's just pure luck of the draw which one do you pick did you pick the right one did you pick the wrong one you can mitigate with a lot of the cards that are in the game but once again you would be lucky if you get to those cards that will help you out but that's a good thing too because there's a lot of cards um 
There is a lot of cards, but I still want more. I still want more because that's how much I like this game. Oh, Slap of Hours Best Sale on it. Totally forgot it. This game is fantastic. It's going into my collection. You're going to want to get these player mats because, yes, I mean, just look at that. It looks super cool, and it's also incredibly functional. It shows you exactly where everything needs to go on the board, except for the boss cards, which I thought was kind of odd. Um, but I continue on. This is a great game, and I do love this game. I, I would recommend this game to anyone who is a solo gamer, which really was kind of surprising to me, because honestly, when I read the rules and I saw that it had the uh, the scoring at the end where it's like, oh, you finish 0 to 30, you're this, and 30 to 60, you're this, because that's my least favorite type of solo game, where it's just like, beat your high score. I don't like solo games like that necessarily, but this one was so difficult that I enjoyed that. Another con potentially is that this can be a very difficult game, but I enjoyed the experience and I enjoyed the ride so much, and I think most people will as well, that I don't think the difficulty is going to bug most people. And that's pretty much what I got on the pros. I, I, I think this is a fantastic solo game. If you've been hesitating, if you've been thinking about it, if you like solo games, pull the trigger. If you have kids between the age of, I'd say, 5 and 10 they are really going to enjoy this game. I played this in my classroom, and actually, just like I said, I ran the game and they played it, and the kids loved the game because the theme comes across, because they like the artwork, because they like the choices they got, like which item to buy. Those are big decisions. Do I buy the rations or do I buy the armor? The rations are cheaper, but that armor is really going to help me mitigate some of these points. And there's some really interesting choices to be made there. There's some really interesting combos to be had, depending on which items you get. And in the end, Iron Helm, I would rather be playing it right now as opposed to talking about it, because that's how much I enjoy this game. I look forward in the future, hopefully, when I have some time to exploring some of the extra packs as well, uh, because those extra packs, adding more bosses, adding more trappings, adding more this and that, uh, I just really think... Uh, would unlock this game even more so in the end iron helm from the game crafter if you're into solo games or if you are into family games where you can teach it and let your kids run through it absolutely recommend this game it is spectacular one of my favorite solo games of all time that is iron helm if you're enjoying what i'm doing please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below if you want to support the channel click on that little amazon associates links down below or consider supporting the patreon patreon Oh, also, if you're interested in the game, click on the Game Crafter link down below, because it really does help me out. Um, not financially, but just, well, yeah, I guess it is financially, because if you click on the link and you buy it, they're like, hey, this guy's doing a good job, so we should continue to support him. But anywho, in the comments below, let me know, what is your favorite solo game of all time? For me personally, it is a game that's not actually out yet, Time of Legends Destiny, coming out from... Uh, Mythic Games and Lucky Duck Games. But let me know because I'm getting big into these solo games. I really enjoy them because I'm I'm just running out of time to do other things. And so being able to play a solo game whenever I want is really quite convenient. So let me know in the comments below, especially if they're not your typical high score type of solo games. I'd love to hear what they are. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.